Good morning and welcome to our seed of encouragement. I got the word and I was say at the well. At the well is a story I got from the Bible in uh, John 4, 1 to 30. Try and read it up. But that is the story of Jesus and a woman. And that is the longest conversation Jesus have in his entire ministry on earth. Go and check it out. With a woman. So woman, you're precious in the sight of God. Don't ever let anybody take that away from you. And so I want to talk about the well. You know, Jesus finished uh, ministering to people, baptizing them the Holy Spirit and all that. And then he said he has to go to Samaria. So his uh, disciples, they were like hungry and saying they want to go to the town and pick up food. Just said, okay, he went and sat by the well. Then a certain woman came to draw water from the well and they engaged in a conversation. Jesus told her certain things, just told her, draw water, give me water to drink. She looked at her and said, no, you are from Israel. How can I give water to you? You know, I can't give you water because the tribe Jesus came from, they don't deal with the Samaria. So Jesus said, if you know who you are talking to, you know, this is the living water. You will never test again. She looked at you and said, you don't even have what to draw water from. So how about me giving me water that I will never test again? And, you know, it gets interesting. And then Jesus explained to her and then Jesus told her who she is. And her eyes were open. The eyes of her understanding was open. She's been in blindfolded for, for a long time of her life. The, the blindfold fell off. Because she ran off from where she's finished talking to Jesus and ran into the city and started her ministry. I started ministering to people about the love God had for her. About she doesn't know that God says she's wonderfully and fearfully made. About that she doesn't know that God says she's the head and the tail. About that she doesn't know that she knows that God loved her so much that God laid down his life for her. She she discovered who God created her to be. She found her essence. And I'm talking to women this month, being women month, and it's about women and all that. And so I want to speak to women, to women that are hurting, to women that are broken, to women that feel they are left over, that women that feel my body is being used, but his heart is with someone else. To women that feel nothing good can come out from you. <coughs> that woman doesn't see that, that they see themselves as unappreciated. In your workplace, you feel unappreciated. As a parent, you feel you don't measure up. In your choosing field, you keep thinking there's something lacking. And then you have accusers, the ones that accused daily. They said the, that Satan was in front of Jesus. I'm telling him, reminding him that see the, your servant is because you bless him. That's why he's uh, behaving the way he's behaving. That means they are accusers that are every day throwing bullets of oh you know one time you were like this one time you are there remember that what you did to, oh remember that abortion you did oh remember that child you forsaken oh remember that that man that left you remember you were a divorcee remember that you widowed remember that you were single parents remember that that you, this this the the accusers they keep on accusing you let's take it a little further Remember the woman that Jesus was on his own, or sitting on his own. Or. They brought her and said, Lord, we caught her in the very act of idolatry. And according to the law, we need to stone her, we need to kill her. What do you say, Master? Jesus stood down and started writing on the floor. Writing. They said, after a while, when Jesus looked up, because Jesus said today, he would have seen to cast the first stone. And he kept writing. When Jesus looked up, they said, everybody was gone. And Jesus looked at her and said, daughter of Abraham, the handmaid of God, 
the, the apple of God eyes. The one that God, when God was done created creation, he puts the man to sleep because God doesn't want anything to disturb him when he was making you woman. God has to put the man to sleep. He didn't even want the man to see all the ingredients he's going to miss to make you awesome. He put the man to sleep and then he formed you and said to you, go to the world, multiply, fill the world, dominate, rule. He said, I didn't kiss you. I didn't condemn you. Why are you in the place of darkness? Why are you crying, lamenting, trying to validate what people say about you? Why are you weeping, heartbroken? Because he wants your body, but he doesn't want your, your heart. He's with you. Yeah, your lover, your husband. He's with you. With your body. But you know his heart is lost in somewhere. He's in love with someone else. And you are crying. And you, they have called you all sort of name. That woman. <laughs> Jesus said, you know, just said, the husband you are with isn't even your husband. Guess he's four, five, six husband. <laughs> right? Jesus, and Jesus began to tell her, you are loved. Your heavenly father loved you. I love you, my child. I, I adore you. And that's why I handed you the baton of creation. And I told you to go out there and create. Go out there and build. And that is why when you give a woman a seed, he gives you a harvest. You give a woman a home, a house, she makes it a home. You give a woman a business, she makes that business multinational. Anything a woman touch, she multiplies. Whatever a woman held, she nurtures. That is why you see a woman calling the husband baby or the lover, sweetheart or obim. Because they nurture, they just have it in them to nurture. A woman comes into a man's life, the man's life change. Because she's a helpmate. Now the man can relax. Because the woman will bring up wonderful ideas that will blossom the man. And then you see the man all, you know, all rub, rub, bush and fun. Like, ah, since the woman is adding weight. Because a helper, a nurturer have heard him. Woman die at lows. He didn't accuse you. Remember the woman? The Mary, the one that break the alabaster oil at the feet of Jesus. You hear what the disciples say? They said, oh, Jesus, how can you be mingling with this certain kind of women? She's not supposed to be in our midst. And why would she waste such an expensive uh, a perfume on you? We would have sell it and use the money for the poor. And God said, the poor will still be. The ones that accuse you will still be living with you in this world. But she came to worship. Woman, rise up and worship. Rise up and build that business. Rise up and raise that family. Rise up in your place of authority. God has given you the baton, the authority to stand and pray. Pray the devil out of your marriage. Pray the devil out of your children. Pray the devil out of your business. Pray the devil out of your job. Pray the devil out of your career. Whatever that is standing against you, stand up in your authority and tell them, be still and it will be. Stand in your place of authority. Don't be timid no more. That woman, when she finished having a conversation with Jesus, her timidity left her. Her eyes got open because she got understanding. She got the feel of who she are. She knows who she is and she stands in that authority and nobody can intimidate her anymore. Now she can go to the well whenever she wants to go. She used to hide to go to the well. At noon, when nobody goes to the well, that's when she goes. But when she encounters knowledge in 
knowledge of who she is. The Bible says, my people perish for our lack of knowledge, ignorance. But when she found the truth, they said the truth. When you know the truth, the truth will set you free. She discovered who God said she was. And she ran and she tell everybody. She doesn't care of what her accusers were saying. She didn't care, say, oh, you've been divorced 120 times. <laughs> she ran out and said, I am the handmaid of God. I am fearful and wonderfully made. See, I saw somebody that loves me. I found who loves me. Oh, I'm loved. I'm valued. I'm appreciated. I, I, I am beautiful. I'm wonderful. I am not what you say I am. I am a child of the most high God. He has filled me with his righteousness. He didn't condemn me either. Rather, he has pulled me up in my place, in my horrible pit, and he has put my feet upon the rock, and I'm standing tall because I'm the head and not the tail. I am above and never beneath, and nothing can take away. They say when women pray, when you find your place, when you know your place, you tell the devil, get the hell out of my life. And you begin to live in the fullness of who God made you to be. Do I came today to encourage you, woman. I came today to tell you that you have been set loose. You are free. Martha say, at your will, Lord. Nevertheless, I believe Lazarus was saved. Mary told them, whatever he say you do, do. That's just what he said. Whatever he say you do, do. Women are in the ministry of God. It was, a, it was women that went to the great side of God when he had risen. We women are the ones that saw the angel and came and told the men that he is risen. Woman, rise up. In your place of authority and begin to bet your generational blessing there is a lot that you have to begin to push out you need to push out you need you don't have to think of the bed level the pain and then you will not push out yes there will be pain before you push that baby but you're gonna push that baby you're gonna bet that baby because they said a woman cannot forsake her stocking child no matter how a woman feel she can't forsake. That is why you see women, they say single mother, single this, single that. Because a woman can't lift the child. Even when she tries to get to her child and the child doesn't, she still ministers to her child. She still prays in her quiet place. She still held her children all together. That's why the Bible said that even a woman is forsake, that God can't. And I'm telling you, women, rise up. You've been, you've been, you've been the back, back, backward for a long time you'll be in darkness for a long time. that is why when you step in certain places a woman if you walk in your toilet, there are places you step in they know you came in because darkness just have to give way darkness cannot stand where light stands so when you step in darkness leave and when you know what you have you know who you are that god have created you and give you the baton of creation that's why when you go certain place their body gets irritated they, because there's a reaction you know when you walk into somewhere and you, you have light darkness begin to make noise it begin to crumble when jesus went into a place he said no lord what are you doing here what do you want and jesus cast those demon from the man and they ran into the into the pigs because they know the authority you have if, if, do you wonder why when you go to send places they hate you and then all before you know it, they all line up, become your followers, and begin to do you begin to see the duplicates of you in them because they are now living like you. Because you have an authority, you you have an authority on your head, you you have a seal on your head. Women put on your crown, queens, princesses, put on your crown and stand in your royalty, stand in the place of your authority, stand in your essence, and begin to bet out. The multi ministry, the industries, the families, the, the 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 house, and everything that God said you should build, the nations, because the the world is waiting endlessly for the manifestation of the children of God. It's high time get up to the front row, no more sitting at the back seat. Get up, be in charge. All right, women. So, 
God loves us so much. I, I tell you, woman, that God loves us so much. 